Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. All right, folks, welcome to the Tuesday edition of the Steve Malzberg Show from our New York City studios. Roger Stone will join us momentarily. That was Donald Trump yesterday. Of course, you know all about his plan. Every presidential candidate on every side has denounced him. The RNC has denounced him. Uh, Dick Cheney has denounced him, as you'll hear in a second. But Donald Trump is not calling uh, for American Muslims to be deported or American Muslim citizens to be prevented from re-entering the country. He's saying Muslims who aren't here yet shouldn't be allowed to come. The polls show, the latest polling information, which we'll get to later, shows that um, here in this country, over half of Muslims want Sharia law. Uh, among the rest of the world, depending where you are, it's 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent want Sharia law. And sometimes they say bombing, uh, suicide bombing is justified. That's what he's trying to prevent. Roger Stone will join us. But first, let's hear the condemnation from Dick Cheney. I think uh, this whole notion that somehow we can just say no more Muslims, just ban a whole religion goes against everything we stand for and believe in. I mean, religious freedom has been a very important part of our our history and where we were, came from. A lot of people here, my ancestors got here because they were Puritans. Um, there wasn't anybody here then when they came. But it's a, uh, it's a mistaken notion. All right. Um, I, I don't know about that. I, I, I admire the heck out of Dick Cheney. He was here, and I told him to his face uh, how much I admire him. But joining us now is Roger Stone, as promised, Republican political consultant, former advisor to Donald Trump, and, of course, the author of The Clinton's War on Women. Hello, Roger. Steve. I, you, know, you know what gets me? Um, if I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times since last night, that this is unconstitutional. And i got to tell you, uh, 8 U.S.C. 1182, there's a great National Review uh, article today by Mark uh, Krikorian, and he, he has the statute in there. The president could do that if he wants, if he feels that the, um, let's put it up, actually. Let's put that, uh, th that statute up on the screen, and I will read it to you. And it says that, uh, could we get it up? All right. Whenever the president finds the entry of any aliens or any class of aliens to the U.S. would be detrimental to the interests of the U.S., he may by proclamation and for such period as he shall deem necessary suspend the entry of all aliens of any class or aliens as immigrants or non-immigrants or impose on the entry of aliens any restrictions he may deem to be appropriate. So uh, it's, it's not unconstitutional, Roger. Well, and also, uh, as Trump has made very clear, this is a temporary ban. Right. Uh, look, Dick Cheney, I think, uh, misrepresented Trump's views. Trump is not saying we should block all Muslims from the United States for all time. But what he is saying is just common sense. Until we have some kind of system in place that allows us to distinguish the good guys from the bad guys, and by the way, I have no doubt that the vast majority of Muslims who want to come here are decent, peace-loving people. But among them, there very well may be, in fact, I think there's likely to be, as we saw in France in the Paris attacks, Terrorists. So Trump's uh, first uh, responsibility as a man who would be running for president is the safety and security of the United States. Uh, I know the talking heads and the liberal media elite are going out of their minds today. The Republican national chairman says the, that they will no longer sponsor a fundraiser with Donald Trump. All of this is helping him. All of this is adding to Trump NATO, to his momentum for the Republican nomination. Because Trump's proposal here will make common sense to average people, okay. even though it doesn't appeal to the elites. So, so let me ask you two things. First, why is the head of the RNC, why is Paul Ryan, why are, is every presidential candidate, why are, they reacting the way they, uh, why are they reacting the way they're reacting? Well, these are the very people who have mishandled the entire question of, of Islamic extremism to date. So why would they change their position? Uh, again, I think they're afraid of the mainstream media firestorm that this has caused. But as we saw with the issue of the wall previously, uh, and as we saw when he spoke about 9-11, and we now know, by the way, that the, both the Clinton and the Bush administration had multiple warnings about the attack on America on 9-11, uh, and they did nothing to put the pieces together and connect the dots. As in those media flaps, Trump is going to be propelled upward 
and forward by this, but the weak need sisters at the Republican National Committee just aren't smart enough to see it. All right, so let me ask you this. You know, last time you were on, you surprised me with an answer to a question where I said to you, so I said the naysayers, those who say Donald Trump's going to be looking for a way out, you know, that he's not in it for the long haul, that maybe he's getting bored or he doesn't really want to win in the first place, whatever. I said, so, so you say to them he will never drop out. And you said anything's possible. Let's wait and see where, you know, when the, when the real money starts aiming their guns at him, how he reacts. Now, there are those who are saying, like Rachel Maddow, for instance, from what I read, I didn't hear her say it, um, I wouldn't torture myself with that, uh, that this is it. This is part of Trump wanting to get out. So he's thinking of the most outrageous thing he could say to try to tick as many people off as he can, even within his party, and this is what he's doing. Well, I couldn't disagree with that more. Uh, Trump speaks from the heart. This is what he really thinks. Look, these are desperate times, and they call for temporary desperate measures. Trump is not reading off of some poll or some focus group or some you know, uh, issue advisory report. What Trump says is what Trump believes. I suspect you're going to find that this actually strengthens him going into the Iowa caucuses as opposed to the other way around. At the same time, I've always said Trump is a realist. He said this himself. If he dropped the single digits, if he were running fifth or sixth, of course he'd drop out of the race. But there's virtually no prospect of that happening. He is the front runner. Yet they keep asking, when is Trump going to drop out? Right. In all honesty, Chris Christie, Rand Paul, these guys are running way behind. All right, let when me, are they going to drop out? Let me ask you this. Um, the pledge, and I don't mean the Pledge of Allegiance, the pledge that you know, Donald Trump and all the rest of them took, that they would uh, support Republicans. Even Paul Ryan today said, if Trump's the nominee, he'll vote for him. Uh, but now with, with the RNC doing what they did and speaking out against him as they are, and the other Republic, uh, Republican candidates doing the same, but let's focus on the RNC for a second, uh, does this open the door for Trump to rip up that pledge if he's not the nominee and run as a third party? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so, because, uh, again, he's the Republican frontrunner. Why would we even ask him? No, 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 if he doesn't get the nomination, well, if he doesn't. Well, I, look, I can't speak for Trump. That's very clear. No, no. In your view, does this rip up the pledge because the RNC is, you know, is canceling in a, you know, an event for him, like you said, or whatever they're doing? So uh, does that say, well, agreement or, or shmeement? He rips it up and he says the RNC didn't play fair. I'm not going to play fair. I, I always thought that the great thing about the pledge was how it worked in reverse, meaning all these other candidates have now signed a pledge that would require them to support Donald Trump when he is the nominee. Right, no, I understand that, but if, if he is, wasn't... This is yeah. a classic okay. art of the deal, in my opinion. Right, uh, right. Look, I, think it, I still believe it is unlikely that he runs as, a, uh, as, a, uh, as an independent candidate, but Steve, when you're worth $10 billion and you have both the name ID and the infrastructure and the money to wage such a campaign, you certainly can't rule it out. Right. All right, let me give you one more. In Iowa, two conflicting polls yesterday. The first one, Ted Cruz, you know, catapults to the top. And then the CNN one comes out later in the day yesterday. And status quo, Trump uh, way ahead in Iowa. So which, which one do we believe? Uh, first of all, caucuses are notoriously volatile. This is not the same as a primary. And therefore, even in polling, I think uh, it's very hard to determine whether you are polling voters who are actually going to turn out and go to a, a freezing cold gymnasium or auditorium or fire station and sit there for two to three hours to vote. That's a very rare yeah. voter indeed. So um, I haven't looked at the voter screens in both of these polls, but all I can tell you is caucus polling is notoriously inaccurate. Right. And, and therefore, I believe Trump is probably still ahead in Iowa, although there is no doubt that Senator Ted Cruz has got a head of steam and is coming on in both states. And there is evidence that Marco Rubio uh, is, uh, is also gaining strength. All right. Roger, great to talk to you, sir. Always good to talk to you. Thank you very much. We're coming back with the Molesburg panel, Tom Tancredo and Christopher Hahn. Don't go away.